Hello, and welcome back to Data Science for Drug Discovery, Health, and Translational Medicine. This module is about cheminformatics, and we'll do an introduction, and in particular, cheminformatics applied to drug discovery. That is a rather natural fit because cheminformatics has been developed uh, very mindful of its applications to drug discovery. This course is being offered through the Indiana University School of Informatics and Computing and its data science programs. So it only seems logical to mention that IU SOIC has really been a leader in cheminformatics education. And in particular, this course and Professor David Wild have been uh, leaders uh, in that. In this slide, you can see David there and uh, a book which he has written, Introducing Cheminformatics, uh, which is referenced in the syllabus and we encourage you uh, to obtain. It is a great reference for this subject. Uh, there's also this website, learncheminformatics.com, uh, and a free online course uh, separate from this, which is offered through IU, uh, Introducing Cheminformatics. So many good resources uh, relevant to cheminformatics. Here we have the definition from this website. Uh, cheminformatics is the study of all aspects of the representation and use of chemical and related biological information on computers. It has applications in drug discovery, health, data mining, and many other areas. Let's start by looking at a few drugs and see if that helps us think about why cheminformatics may um, help us. I mean, what makes these drugs so special? Uh, looking here, we've got some rather familiar compounds, caffeine, I'm sure we, several of us have had some of that today, nicotine in tobacco, um, morphine, a strong painkiller, an opiate, a tamoxifen, a cancer drug, benzyl penicillin, an antibiotic, which has saved countless lives, Prozac, antidepressant, Valium, a tranquilizer, and so on. Um, these are very powerful drugs and very important drugs. And yet, looking at them, it is tempting to think they're rather simple. Uh, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, uh, not that large, fairly easy to draw on a napkin or a whiteboard. It is tempting to think that using some computational tools, we can represent these compounds, uh, associate their chemical structures with their special properties, and perhaps develop models whereby we can uh, develop new drugs. And in fact, that is to some extent true, and that is the purpose of cheminformatics. A bit more on that idea. Here's a chemotype or a type of compound called benzodiazepines. And it's a class of drugs, a class of tranquilizers, which share a common ring system. And you can kind of see uh, that those fused rings forming the central features uh, of these three examples. And there are more. Um, also important terms are uh, a uh, chemical pattern or a chemotype or a scaffold around which additional uh, chemical functionality is attached. Um, this makes uh, use of the so-called similarity principle, that similar chemicals will have similar biological effects. That principle is not hard and fast and absolute, but it does hold, and certainly in this uh, case. Representing chemicals as molecular graphs enables efficient storage and analysis. So this is part of our motivation. Uh, why we want to be able to store chemical entities on a computer, and process them, and analyze them. So how do we represent a molecule on a computer? Here we see something called the JavaScript Molecular Editor, JSME, uh, in action. The drawn compound happens to be dopamine, a neurotransmitter present in all of our brains. And uh, also, there are two representations um, of that molecule. Uh, one is the SMILES. It's the Simplified Molecular Input Line Entry System. So it's a single line representing the, those atoms and bonds. And then below that, is something called the mole file, which is a connection table. One row per atom and one row per bond. And these are equivalent 
uh, for most intents and purposes. They represent the molecular graph, the valence model of this molecule, meaning the atoms and the covalent bonds uh, between atoms. If we can represent chemicals on the computer, then we can store them and build databases. And chemical databases are extremely useful uh, for many purposes, including drug discovery applications. One of the best known uh, chemical databases for life sciences research is PubChem from the National Institutes of Health, uh, NLM, Library of Medicine. This is a page from PubChem for the compound diazepam, also known as Valium. It includes the structure itself and much data about that chemical compound. PubChem has roughly 100 million distinct compounds in it and provides all kinds of cheminformatics functionality, including searching by names and other fields and searching by structure, the chemical structure itself. When we say searching by chemical structure, we of course mean searching for patterns of atoms and bonds which are present in the structure. And it may seem fairly obvious what it would mean to search for an exact structure, but we're also interested in searching for a substructure. And we're also interested in searching for not just an exact substructure, but a pattern. And this uh, example shows what we call a SMARTS pattern. If you look at the SMARTS query string, we have some asterisks, which as you might guess, mean any atom. The tildes mean any bond. The hash sixes mean carbon, as in atomic number six. The hash sevens mean nitrogen, as in uh, atomic number seven. And um, they're uh, written that way to indicate aliphatic or aromatic. Um, won't get into this too much right now, but the point is that we can describe um, flexible chemical subgraph patterns. And I'm saying here it's akin to a regular expression in text searching. Also, a very important aspect of cheminformatics is 3D representation and analysis of molecules. Here we're looking at some visualizations of the same molecule three different ways. To the left, a ball and stick model. Um, in the middle, what we call a space fill, uh, where the spheres represent, in some sense, the uh, radii of the atoms. And then to the right, a surface, Van der Waals surface, uh, kind of representing some uh, functional surface of that same molecule. Um, these are actually models, and if you were to uh, use these uh, in the JS small um, application, you'd be able to rotate and examine them um, interactively. Here, of course, we're just looking at the images. Why do we care about the 3D characteristics of molecules? Well, um, the behavior of these drugs, drug bioactivity, is related to the 3D properties and interactions of the molecules. In addition to the JS small app, which is being used to depict these, the confirmations, the 3D coordinates here, have been generated uh, by something called RDKit, uh, a free and open source uh, cheminformatics package, which is highly recommended for many applications. Of course, it should be obvious we can't cover too much of cheminformatics, and the reference resources are highly encouraged for a deeper dive into many aspects of cheminformatics. But as usual, learning a few terms uh, is often very important for understanding some chem informatics related literature. So I'll try to go through these fairly briefly. When we say a small molecule, we mean not a protein or nucleic acid, which we'd refer to as a macromolecule, but something probably drug size. Pharmacology, which is why we do chem informatics to a great extent, the study of uses, effects, and modes of actions of drugs. Bioactivity, that's the effect of a chemical on a biological target, normally a protein. Um, IC50, EC50 are measures of bioactive potency. Um, IC stands for inhibition constant, and it refers to a concentration 
um, sorry, inhibition concentration, and it refers to the concentration of a compound at which 50% of the effect is uh, achieved, EC um, efficacy uh, concentration, so it's similar, where it doesn't have to refer to an inhibition. Structure activity relationship, also known as SAR, is the relationship between bioactivity and some structural feature or features within a chemical series. A molecular descriptor, so any measured theoretical or computed property. Substructure searching, we've discussed a little bit, uh, searching for molecular subgraphs, exact or um, not. Similarity searching, uh, searching for similar molecules where the definition of similar, similarity uh, can vary a lot itself. A pharmacophore is a 3D concept, which means the features pattern interacting with a binding site. So a pharmacophore interacts with the binding site of some target, typically a protein binding site. Molecular modeling uh, refers to computational modeling, which could be 2D, 3D, and or statistical, which is done to explain, visualize, and predict. Computational chemistry normally connotes some sort of physics-based modeling. Uh, could be molecular mechanics uh, or dynamics, dynamics including the dimension of time, uh, varying levels of theory up to and including uh, quantum physics, again, at various levels. Virtual screening, we use that term to contrast with wet lab screening, meaning on the computer in silico, uh, testing for bioactive candidates. Of course, we cannot prove that something is bioactive on the computer, but we hope that we have uh, a reasonably good predictive ability. One important application of cheminformatics is modeling protein ligand binding, which is how drugs work. The mechanism of action of uh, most drugs is by non-covalent binding um, against a uh, biological target, typically a protein binding site. So this is, of course, of great interest in modeling that kind of binding and predicting when is a strong binder is a very important aspect of drug discovery. Uh, this uh, figure comes from AutoDoc, which is a suite of automated docking tools. And uh, docking, again, can help you to visualize, understand, um, and predict uh, what molecules bind to what binding sites and how strongly. Autodoc is just one of several tools for docking and modeling protein ligand binding, some of which are uh, commercial and some are free. Uh, we're going through some examples of uh, cheminformatics applications related to drug discovery, and here's one more. Assessing what we would call drug likeness and lead likeness. And these terms uh, refer to some um, kind of understandings that were developed uh, starting in the 1990s approximately. And um, Dr. Chris Lipinski was well known uh, for his rule of five and uh, associated with uh, this concept of drug likeness. Um, he found that so many of the compounds being tested at his company, Pfizer, were simply not like typical drugs. And so he questioned whether it was statistically wise to test so many compounds which were not like drugs statistically. So he came up with these general rules as to what drugs are like. Uh, they're not intended to be absolute. And in fact, many good drugs uh, fall outside of the uh, norm, shall we say. But uh, by looking at these properties, which all can be predicted or observed um, via theory, uh, you can uh, increase the chances that you are examining molecules which are more likely to be uh, viable drugs. The idea of lead, lead, lead likeness as separate from drug likeness recognizes the fact that leads are typically optimized and increased in size uh, as they're brought through the development process. And so the statistical profile of lead likeness is slightly different than drug likeness. And that's important to uh, understand. The uh, descriptors or properties that we do uh, include in the rule of five are molecular weight, 
and the count of hydrogen bond donors, hydrogen bond acceptors, and log P, which is the octanol water partition coefficient, which roughly speaking gives you a sense of how a drug will be partitioned in a organism into watery and fatty tissues. So let's just list some of the drug discovery applications that make heminformatics so important. And these are each big items and many um, in different ways of implementing each. First, uh, simply databases, databases of relevant compounds uh, relevant to drug discovery, such as PubChem, which we looked at, and of course all the metadata about those compounds. 2D virtual screening, meaning substructure and similarity searching um, on representations which reflect the so-called 2D uh, aspects of the molecule, what you would draw on a whiteboard. 3D virtual screening, which means uh, searching for some of the 3D properties, shape, pharmacophores, in three dimensions. Property prediction, uh, such as solubility, very important uh, for pharmacology. Uh, ADMET, which is a very important acronym standing for absorption, distribution, metabolism, excretion, and toxicity, all properties or areas of action which affect a, uh, a drug's efficacy and safety. Clustering, clustering of chemical compounds, otherwise known as unsupervised machine learning. Quantitative structure activity relationship modeling, QSAR building quantitative mathematical models which help to predict uh, how functionalizing a compound relative to a chemical series can increase its uh, potency and other properties. Modeling or predicting protein ligand binding as we uh, show in the autodoc uh, slide. And so-called de novo design, designing molecules from scratch, uh, building molecules uh, such as from genetic uh, algorithms. This has been a very brief introduction to cheminformatics and more of a, kind of a tour through some of the many uh, areas of cheminformatics. Uh, I hope it's been helpful just to kind of understand what cheminformatics can do for drug discovery. Uh, and of course, we are providing in the syllabus uh, many references to additional resources such as the Professor Wild book uh, and other resources which I hope you'll explore. Um, let's look at the take-home messages. One, understanding the structure and properties of chemicals, how that enables us to explore biological effects and discover new drugs. Chemical databases provide a wealth, uh, access to a wealth of biomedical and drug discovery data searchable via cheminformatics. And in silico, predictive modeling accelerates and economizes early stage drug discovery. That's, again, a short intro to cheminformatics. Um, there's much more for those who are interested. Until next time.